Hello, loved ones, subscribers, followers. Thank you for following us, new subscribers. Thank you for liking and sharing our videos. We thank you so much for following us. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm Reverend Penelope Stewart here today doing a, another book review. I told you I'll be coming back. Actually, I, it's been a week since I, I finished this book. This is a really good book. Oh, my gosh. It's awesome. Um, hey, uh, that Ancestral Medicine book is, is, is good. I found some stuff in there that was really good. Especially when it comes to uh, connecting with the ancestor uh, of the land, the ancestors of the land. But this book right here, it's like my my whole language, um, the Know Thyself program, um, some of my experiences with the ancestors is it are is in this book, and it's so. Um, much information exercises and helping you connect with the ancestors as well. But his perception and the way we pick up messages for ancestors is is one of the ones I've seen more on target with with I I, I guess it's the language that he uses. But this Steve uh, Stephen D. Farmer knows what he's talking about like I've, I've had so many of these experiences uh that he talks about but um the book is how many pages i think i got this book from amazon the book uh i'm trying to it is a, a over it's 219 pages and let's see 38 chapters, 38 chapters, really good chapters that, and it's exercises in here. That's what I like about doable exercises that I know because I've done them and they worked. If any of you follow any of my meditations, um, I'm astounded by the meditations I made. And that was just me. Uh, my experiences in my meditation that I share with you guys that's on the channel. My experiences, I can see them in these books. Uh, the meditations in these books. I don't know. But it's this is a really good book. It's really juicy. Get the book. Because I'm trying to learn as much as I can about am I doing it right? Um, I'm finding out it's uh, um, some of the stuff I was I'm doing unaware. I'm unaware that I'm doing it. Um, but that's what I do. But I'm unaware that I'm doing it and what it is. And he kind of breaks, he breaks all that down. But let me read uh, just so you a little, little spiffets of things. Because uh, I got some stuff marked in here. But I don't, I'm going to try not to keep y'all long. But this book is so good. It's so good. It, I can't just um, mark just like one. It's so many good chapters in here to me that addresses a contact in the ancestors, dealing with that ancestral karma, um, the exercises that you can do uh, to get rid of that, that get rid of that karma, get rid of that frequency and start to heal. So, uh, well, I wouldn't say get rid of it, but refine it and change it basically is what you're doing. But this is chapter six, perceiving spiritual messages. Page 31, there are essentially four ways we can receive information from the physical world and the world of spirit through visual, auditory, kinet I can't pronounce that, kinetic and cognitive channels. When attempted to contact your ancestors across space and time, it helps to first identify which channel or channels work best for you. When you close your eyes, are you able to conjure up messages easily? If so, most likely one of your strongest modality is visual. If you have a second sight or clairvoyance, it means you have a capacity to see beyond the veil. Ancestors may appear to you more vividly than those who employ different primary receptors. People who are more visual report they get apparitions. 
a very light holographic image of the spirit guide, including ancestors. If the visual channel, channel is one of your strongest, you'll get impressions with your eyes open as well as in your mind, eye. And you'll get receptive visual messages from your environment. For instance, imagine you have been considering a pilgrimage to Mount Shasta in Northern California because you've heard so much about being very special and uh, it being very special and sacred. As you're thinking about it, you see a Shasta cola on the supermarket shelf. Later that same day, you and a friend visit a bookstore and there's a poster with the Mount Shasta on it. Then you go to dinner and there's a painting of the mountain on the wall on your friend. And your friend comments that it looks like Mount Shasta. Time to pack your bags and get ready to pilgrimage to Mount Shasta. So he's showing you to see, he's talking about the synchronicity as well as you see you, that will come up. Uh, and I've seen the synchronicity that happens when you start get really opening yourself up and start getting the messages and doing the healing work. You may get messages through your inner voice. I get that. What I sometimes call whispers in my ear or through sounds and conversations in external environment. I talked about that and I do. I get messages like that. Or through sounds, um, if this is your primary way of receiving information from spirit, it's called clear audience and means clear hearing. For instance, I receive an email from someone I know in Australia. Then while I'm at the mall, I overhear someone talking about Australia. Later that day, I turn on the radio and there's a song from Australia. See how the synchronicity, it'll be a constant synchronicity. See, spirit is always around us. And I always tell people that through animals, through everyone, spirit is always uh, speaking to us. And then he talks about this kinesthetic energy, um, perceiving spiritual information Kinesthetically means you are aware of sensations you feel in your body and any corresponding emotions. I think I think uh, I think the emotions I get. People who get messages this way described it as sensing something or getting a feeling about something. It's also called intuition. Yep, I get that. Um, these sensations indicate something is going on or an existential level of physical resonance resonance and vibration congruency with the message spirit wants to communicate whether through ancestors or other spirit guides it can be a sensation or an emotion or a combination of two that's usually what i get that and auditory it can be sensation or emotion okay sometimes even aromas appear with no apparent source in the physical realm remember i was telling y'all about that aroma like my connection, I can feel my connection. Uh, um, the more I do this, more more healing work. It, oh my gosh! And like I said, this book is good. You may smell a type of perfume that your grandmother used to wear as an indication that she's present. Images may follow, or you may hear something in your inner voice triggered by the sense of the ancestors' presence. So yeah, this like I said, I'm just how long ago in on that book. But he even have an exercise to this, to being able to tap into this, discover your your per perceptual pre uh, preferences. So he even has an ex uh, exercise to help you with that. There's going to be a lot of meditation going on in this book uh, book because you're going within, opening yourself up. Uh, let me see, blocks into perceiving and receiving. I have a lot of people to come in with blocks. That's you know that's not a bad thing. We all here to heal. That's that's what the journey is all about. Realizing who you truly are, tapping into your power. Because once you start healing, you start tapping into your your real power. That's where the real power is. When you really start to heal, when you, if you can heal yourself, that's where the real power is at. When you're totally healing, you can heal yourself. Uh, you just start this power. You you just tap into that power. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, blocks to perceiving and receiving. Uh, chapter 7, page 37. Uh, there are four conditions that can block, can either block or distort spiritual messages, making it more difficult to discern whether the message is coming from spirit or in, or is ego generated. 
These are grief, pain, self-pity, aggression without cause. Oh my gosh. And I definitely know I definitely know a lot of these blocks. Some of us do. Uh know, know a lot of these blocks. We want to go to the next level of our spirituality. We feel like we've plateaued at where we're at. But you know you have pla having plateaued. There's something that needs to be healed in you. There's something that it, you need to look at that needs to be healed and you need to sit in it you know you have to look at it and stop denying it and pushing it away and deal with what's there losing someone one or something special to you usually triggers the very human process of grieving it's the most natural response there is to loss often someone will go through five stages not always in the sequence but often moving back and forth through them these stages are denial Anger, anger, bargaining, sadness, acceptance. Oh my gosh. And this this is what the Know Thyself program is all about. The first thing we do is get you out of denial. The second thing we do is start, we start dealing with those triggers. That that usually is gonna trigger anger. Uh usually for the control people, it's gonna control uh, do a lot of anger going on. Then bargaining. You know, again, trying to manipulate something. Um, and then you get sad because it didn't go out the way you want it. And then you have to accept things the way they are. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a really good book. The intensity and duration of the att attachment to whatever or whoever was lost. The person perception and in interpretation of the loss correlate with the intensity of the grieving. When you're in the depths of grief process, you can more easily forget your relationship with forget your re relationship with spirit or even deny it because you're feeling hurt and abandoned. To remember and sustain a relationship with spirit along with the support of other people are the keys to navigating through sometimes the deep well of grief that can feel like a heavy burden. Being open to spirit during this time, especially your ancestors, will help you navigate this passage through grief. Yet to remain static in any of the first four stages, denial, anger, bargaining, or sadness, potentially creates occlusion or fogginess and lack of clarity, such that perceiving messages at all becomes a greater challenge. So he's letting you know if you don't work on these blockages, you won't receive like these clear messages. And you just have to accept things the way they are, you know, um, and move through it and, and learn learn how to take care of yourself through it. Um, really good book. Uh, like I said, it's juicy. Like, I, I got a lot of stuff marked in here. I'm not trying to keep y'all long. Uh, not that one. I'm so sorry. Oh, I thought this one. This one I have been doing. This has really shocked me, this uh, exercise he has in here, and it's called Ancestor Walking Meditation. I love this. You guys know I usually walk on my days off at least an hour. I like going down there by the river and walking the trail of tears here lately. Uh, I think I'm going to do something for the ancestors there soon. But I just walk there, and I connect with ancestors, and I've been doing some healing work down there just talking to the ancestors and really been talking about forgiveness. That's been the, the subject I've been working with the ancestors about, really digging deep and, and looking at myself and talking about forgiveness. So, um, yeah. So, this ancestor, I, I got, I, I'm sorry, y'all. I get, I got, uh, I went into a little tangent because I get, you know, I'm sorry, you guys. But, uh, ancestors walk in meditation. And this is on page 93. Uh, in chapter oh, animal spirit guides as messengers you'll see that too a lot of you see everything spirit is always communicating with you through birds and i mean every trees everything you see around you is spirit it's hard i know you're not separated from anything everything is all spirit and remember you are the illusion you are the illusion. You are not real. Spirit created you. You are not real. Spirit created this, this right here. Without spirit, you couldn't exist. 
None of this could, could exist without spirit. It go, you know, I can go into that. But the ancestor walking meditation, do this meditation in an area outdoors, such as a park, the mountains, a wooded area, or even your backyard. If possible, take off your shoes and go barefoot. And else wear leather sole shoes, as this will connect you with the earth. Whereas rubber sole shoes insulate you from the that connection. Start walking slower than your usual pace. And as you do, coordinate with breathing your walking so you're taking two or three steps with each breath. Do this for a few moments as you observe your surroundings. This will help you quiet your mind and allow you to slip into an ancestral state of consciousness. Remember, this state of consciousness is readily accessible as it exists in in you as a cellular memory and thus can create an energetic resonance with the deep ancestral sensory memory. As you continue walking, begin to make statements that are a response to whatever you are observing in correspondence. And then he states, um, he gives you some affirmations to say while you're walking. So I thought that was a really good one. I do ancestral walks. They have been really, really helpful to me. Um, and I encourage him because you learn a lot from spirit when you're out in nature and you're walking. Uh, where it is another one I wanted to read. And I'm not going to keep you long. It's just so many juicy things in here to share with you. It's so much stuff in here, you guys. Like, this book goes deep. It really does. Uh, I recommend the book 100% across the board. I do. I do. Uh, I recommend this book. It was really juicy. This and Daniel Four book was very, very, very insightful to me. Very insightful. And I was able to confirm a few things, but I also was able to be like, okay, uh, you probably need a little work in this area or look more in this area. But very helpful book when it came to working with the ancestors and really knowing how to connect with them, you know, because I'm really been doing a lot of healing in that area. And so um, I, I, I get every book I can. And so if you're trying to do some healing, uh, trying to break those unhealthy patterns, get this book. I can't. Oh, good book. That's all I can say. Good book. You need, you know, check it out. The Parent-Child Connection Manifests, uh, it's called Part 3, Healing Ancestral Family Patterns. This is the toughest part to me when you really start uh, doing a lot of self-reflection and looking at your family tree. And we do that. Uh, he talks about that too. He actually does that in this book too. Because we do that in another self class. We break down the whole family tree and start looking at these patterns everyone had in the family. And then we start looking, doing some reflection with ourselves. So it's very, very interesting uh, when you start looking at it and you be like, wow. Uh, it becomes very real what frequency that you're on. And then you begin to start to work on it. Uh, the parent-child connection manifests as one link in a long chain of ancestral karma that stretches back through time. Your link to your family allows you to be born into that specific line. It is a link that needs to be understood and respected. In the modern scientific age, it is very difficult for people to accept the fact that they are responsible to their ancestors, that they are actually liable for their actions of their ancestors if the, if the resulting karma has not been dissolved. Woo! Woo! You heard it right there. Right there, you heard it. Many find it absurd to think that they that the actions of an unknown ancestor could possibly have anything to do with what is happening to them today. And I tell you what, it has everything to do with it. Everything to do with it. But time and time again, when investigating someone's karma, I find problems that stretch back generations. And that's what you'll find out in the Know Thyself course when you start looking at that family tree and doing the real work. Their spirit is not just an individual entity. It is also part of the family spirit that births and nurtures it. Okay. 
uh, like I said, this is, and that, that was just a little foreword before I even, I ain't even read a chapter, chapter yet. This is part three. Yes, and he goes in there, and like I said, there's a lot of exercises in here. Uh, um, uh, he goes into dark law. I didn't even get to the, it's so much good stuff in here. I couldn't share it with you. And so, yes, I recommend the book, loved ones. Get the book. It's a lot of healing going on in here. Uh, they, the same healing that um, we do, some of the same stuff we do in the Know That Self course, uh, some of the same things I use in my own personal healing. So I do recommend the book, Steve Farmer, Stephen Farmer, got it on Amazon. Uh, I thank you so much, loved ones, for being here with me today. I hope you found this uh, review very helpful, informative, and insightful. Light and love. Namaste, loved ones.